the world is changing. Thanks to advanced technologies, life-changing innovations are coming out faster than ever before. From cell phones to supercomputers, from spaceships to self-driving cars, all of these technologies have one thing in common. They only exist because of the crazy pace of innovation in semiconductors, going all the way back to Intel's first microchip in 1970. Want to hear something even crazier? 90% of all advanced chips in the world, like the ones in Apple's iPhones, Nvidia's graphics cards, and even parts of Intel's processors are made by just one company. But the semiconductor industry is changing fast, and there's fierce competition between companies like Intel and AMD, Tesla and Apple. Before we can invest in this high growth space, we need to understand these players. My name is Alex, and I'll walk you through it by looking at the science behind these stocks. Let's start from the beginning. In 1971, Intel came out with the very first microprocessor, called the Intel 4004, which had a whopping 2,000 transistors on it. Transistors are the fundamental building blocks of all chips. At a high level, they're just switches that are responsible for all the ones and zeros by turning electric currents on and off. One way to measure the performance of a chip is by its transistor count. Modern CPUs like the Intel Core i9 contain billions of transistors in just a couple square inches. One of the co-founders of Intel, Gordon Moore, actually predicted that the number of transistors on a chip would double roughly every two years. That prediction became known as Moore's Law, and he made it back in 1965, five years before the first microprocessor even came out. In the 50 plus years since then, the number of transistors on a chip increased by over a million fold, doubling roughly every 18 months on average. Talk about a mind boggling pace of innovation. In the past, Moore's law was true because companies kept finding new ways to make transistors smaller and smaller. And it turns out that reducing the size of transistors became sort of an arms race in the semiconductor world, a race that they're still in today. You may have heard about Intel's failure to produce seven nanometer chips back in 2020, which caused Apple to start designing their own chips, the M1s. I'll talk more about Apple in a few minutes, but the important part is to understand these measurements. 10 nanometer, 7 nanometer, 5, and so on, are talking about the processes that chip makers use to cram more transistors on the same size die. But even though Intel had a massive head start in this race, they're no longer the top dog. Over the last few years, Intel started losing market share to a company called Advanced Micro Devices, or AMD. Here's what's going on. Intel's approach to chip production hasn't changed much in the last 50 years. The Intel 4004 was created fully by Intel. They did both the design and the manufacturing. Going back as far as the 1980s, almost every chip was built by the company that designed it. But one man saw it differently, and he bet everything he had on this different approach. His name was Morris Chang. I wanted to get a PhD at MIT. Mm. However, uh, I failed uh, the PhD qualifying exam. <laughs> And uh, they, they allow you to take it twice, you know. And I failed fail both times. <laughs> and Chang was born in China. He came to America, went to Harvard, MIT, and Stanford, and after 25 years of working at Texas Instruments, Chang moved to Taiwan because he saw a huge opportunity in the market. While companies like Intel and Samsung did absolutely everything themselves start to finish, Chang chose to focus on just one part of the process and do it better than everyone else. Chang's company would only manufacture the chips, not design them. This was a pretty controversial decision at the time, and securing funding for his company wasn't easy. Finally, funding came in the form of a joint venture between Philips, the Taiwanese government, and private investors, and so the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company was born. Soon enough, other chip makers began outsourcing their manufacturing to TSMC. They got to save on those manufacturing costs and focus on what they did best, while Chang got to focus on driving innovation and scale in manufacturing, and as a result, massively built up his clientele. TSMC still uses this exact same pure play model today and is recognized as one of Asia's most valuable companies. By the way, whenever I get excited about a company and start thinking about investing in it, I head over to Simply Wall Street to understand their valuation and their competition. Looks like TSMC trades at almost 50% below their estimated fair value, has reasonable earnings growth, and even pays a decent dividend. Let's take a closer look at TSMC's valuation. They're priced at around 18 times earnings, compared to Nvidia's PE of 40 and Qualcomm's PE of 13. But if we look at the next 12 months of earnings, TSM trades well below most of their peers. Simply Wall Street steps you through an entire checklist 
list of factors like past performance, current financial health, future cash flows, and even how much a company pays their management, all in a really digestible way. I'll leave a link to TSMC's full valuation analysis for you in the description below. And if you're serious about buying the best stocks at the best price, you can use that link to get an extended free trial and 30% off when you sign up. For now, I'm adding TSMC to my True Disruptors watch list, which I'll be building as I keep digging into the science behind these stocks. So consider subscribing to the channel if you want to follow along as I keep building this list. Morris Chang deciding to have TSMC focus on manufacturing ended up being a brilliant move. Over the years, as chips became more and more complex, so did the process for making them. As TSMC became more and more specialized, they continued to reduce manufacturing times and costs. In the late 2000s, when AMD was on the verge of bankruptcy, TSMC helped them turn things around. AMD was able to sell their own expensive foundries and rely on TSMC to make more of their chips instead. As TSMC kept innovating, all of their customers continued to benefit. In time, companies like Nvidia, Qualcomm, and even Apple followed AMD and moved all of their manufacturing over to TSMC. Today, TSMC is responsible for over 50% of all microchip manufacturing around the world, but they make over 90% of the advanced chips like the ones used in the latest iPhones, supercomputers, and even self-driving cars. This has huge downstream effects for the semiconductor industry. Just this past May, AMD's CEO, Lisa Su, announced that their next-generation Ryzen processors, the Ryzen 7000, are expected to ship later this year. The special thing about these new Ryzen processors is that they are going to use TSMC's new 5 nanometer process, a process that Intel has been struggling to match. In fact, Intel just delayed their 14th generation Meteor Lake processors until the second half of 2023. These processors were supposed to be Intel's answer to AMD's Ryzen 7000s. As a result of these constant delays and setbacks, AMD has been eating into Intel's CPU market share for a while now. Now the next generation of Ryzen processors should close that gap even further. Recent reports say that Intel CEO plans to visit TSMC for the third time this year due to this delay. Even though Intel is fully vertically integrated on paper, TSMC already makes several key components of their processors, so now Intel is forced to choose between two hard options eat the costs of delaying their orders for TSMC amid a global chip shortage, or have TSMC make all of their chips for them. Either way, the gap between Intel's manufacturing capabilities and TSMC's also seems to be widening. All right, there's one more piece of the puzzle here. There's one company that found even more success than Taiwan Semiconductor by focusing on just one thing. ASML has a 100% market share in the market of EUV lithography systems. What the heck does that mean? Let me walk you through it. Lithography is the main process for making microchips. ASML stands for Advanced Semiconductor Materials Lithography, and EUV stands for Extreme Ultraviolet. And these EUV lithography machines contain some of the most complex devices on the planet. Here's a fun example. The mirrors that focus and redirect the EUV lasers inside these lithography machines are literally the flattest structures known to man. That's a big deal because they're needed to etch all of the intricate designs into all of the most advanced microchips that we use today. Again, think about data centers and supercomputers, iPhones, and self-driving cars. And ASML has a complete monopoly on this process and these machines. So in a lot of ways, ASML is just as critical to the entire semiconductor industry as TSMC. And like TSMC, they also have a huge competitive advantage. Semiconductor analysts say it would take 10 years and billions of dollars for another company to even begin competing with ASML's machines from today. Not surprisingly, ASML's biggest customers are the biggest chip manufacturers on the planet, like TSMC, Samsung, and Intel. Nvidia's H100s are their latest GPUs for data centers and one of the most advanced chips in the world. TSMC are manufacturing the H100 GPUs using their new 4 nanometer process, and it'll have over 80 billion transistors, which is actually right in line with Moore's law. Apple recently moved their chips from Intel to TSMC. The success of Apple's processors like the M1, M1 Pro, and M1 Max have led them to book TSMC for their next generation of M2 Pro and M3 chips, which will be made using TSMC's even newer 3 nanometer process. So TSMC is using ASML's EUV lithography machines to build cutting edge chips for some of the best companies in the world. All right. 
So far, we've talked about how Intel really kicked off the microprocessor industry and how these innovations have been following Moore's law for over 50 years. We've looked at how TSMC shook things up by focusing exclusively on foundries and their use of ASML's lithography machines to provide chip manufacturing as a service. Then we saw how companies like AMD, Nvidia, and Apple benefit from that by being able to focus exclusively on designing their chips. And soon, we may have to add Intel to that list as they continue to struggle to keep up on the manufacturing side of things. This is largely the state of the semiconductor landscape today, or it was until the chip shortage. Here's how the chip shortage has really affected everything we've talked about so far. Even before the pandemic, there was more demand for advanced chips than there was supply. There are over 40 billion connected devices today, and that number is expected to triple by the end of the decade. So chip supply was already being stretched thin. When the pandemic hit, the world's supply chains froze and manufacturing slowed down to a crawl. At the same time, there was a sudden spike in demand for all kinds of smart devices as more businesses moved online and more people spent more time at home. Essentially, these two key factors combined to create a perfect storm that resulted in the current global chip shortage. This chip shortage has big impacts on many industries and products. For example, car manufacturers actually account for about 15% of global chip consumption. Towards the end of 2021, major automakers like Ford, Toyota, and GM were literally having to halt production due to the lack of chips. What about Tesla? How did they manage to navigate this chip shortage when nobody else could? Just like every other automaker, Tesla wasn't actually able to get the chips that they needed to fulfill their orders. But because Tesla writes their own software and has a unified computing architecture, they were able to rewrite the lowest levels of their own code to work on chips that weren't in such short supply. The reason that legacy automakers couldn't do this is that their software and hardware is usually controlled by vendors and contractors, who usually have sub-vendors and subcontractors of their own. So while they were dead in the water, Tesla kept making record deliveries. I really think that this speaks to the power of being vertically integrated and maintaining control over the processes that have the biggest impacts on your business. I think that's why Intel isn't so quick to give up on making their own chips, even after all the delays and setbacks. On the flip side, Apple was forced to cut their production targets of their latest iPhone by 10 million units because of this shortage. It's been over a year since Sony launched their PlayStation 5, and it's still almost impossible to get your hands on one. These same supply chain issues also caused shortages for everything from Nvidia's graphics cards, to basic network switches, and even the electronics in wind turbines. But besides these supply chain issues, there's actually another big problem with TSMC making almost all of the advanced chips in the world, and it's that well, TSMC makes almost all the advanced chips in the world. What if something happens to them or their fabrication plants? Did you know that Taiwan is near the junction of two tectonic plates? Or that they get multiple earthquakes every single month? And it's not just earthquakes. In 2021, Taiwan experienced a severe drought, and the usual monsoon rains didn't fall at all. These monsoons usually fill the reservoirs that TSMC uses to cool their systems and rinse away chemicals. Without these rains, TSMC had to resort to trucking in tanks of water from other parts of the island. Isn't it crazy that even our most advanced technologies are still somehow dependent on the weather? They were able to avoid disaster this time, but we all know that the weather is getting more extreme each and every year. Next time, they might not be so lucky. You know you're a titan of industry when the only things that can disrupt you are a force of nature or a global pandemic. And if you want to learn more about the most disruptive, innovative titan in the semiconductor industry, check out this episode next. And if you feel I've earned it, hit those like and subscribe buttons to let me know that you enjoyed the science behind these stocks. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is ticker symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.